Hello, I'm Neely Jones, your host for Focus on Suppliers. This week just might make your mouths water as we get a taste of the candy and sweets category. We talk with our friends from Kaya and learn a little bit more about how an idea to make a difference turned into a chocolate bar. And a company recognized at Walmart's YBM talks about how it's able to sell an Easter basket for just 88 cents. Plus the importance of health education and diversity in the workforce. This is Focus on Supplier starts right now. Focus on Suppliers is presented by 8th and Walton, the premier destination for supplier development, and sponsored in part by Dunn and Bradstreet, Saatchi and Saatchi X, and other outstanding companies. Your millennial fun fact for the week is that Skittles candy brand has over 24 million Facebook subscribers. A candy brand you wouldn't necessarily think would connect directly with millennials, but they love candy and they're seeing double digit growth in the candy category, mostly related to how millennials are continuing to graze and snack throughout the day. They love different and flavorful color and food combinations and Skittles and other candy brands give them an opportunity to engage with a brand that lets them show their unique identity. As we think about how to engage with them in store, it's important to show them opportunities where they can create that unique personality through their candy brand. Find ways to connect, show them how to be playful, give them unique recipes. And we'll see you next time for the next Millennial Minute. Joining us now, a special guest I'm so excited to introduce to you from Kaya, Rick Boozy. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Neely. I'm excited. For people who don't know about your company, you make chocolate. Tell me how it started. Well, um, we were on a trip to Uganda, Central Africa, and we were working in an orphanage. And we were driving down into the slum every day, and there was a railroad track that we had to cross. And you had to stop or you'd rip out the bottom of the vehicle. And so after about two weeks of crossing that, uh, that place, I just lost it. It was just hopelessness and poverty and sadness and I just said I had to do something. So as, as we got on the plane to fly home back to the States, I, I started to dream up what we could do and chocolate became the natural, the natural uh, thing to do. Yeah, you said you went through the three different things that they had and you thought, no, no, yes, this one works. Yep, so we started with, with coffee because uh, Uganda has some really good coffee in the Mbali district and that didn't make sense. I got a bunch of coffee roaster friends and cotton, I love cotton, but I'm not a textile guy, but cacao made really logical sense. We used to own a restaurant where you know, our family's a bunch of foodies and so we're like, that, that, that should be something easy to do. Uh, we had no idea how hard and how much it, how much science and, and art is in making chocolate. Well, let's explain that to our viewers because we I've kind of named you the Indiana Jones chocolate, right, as we were talking about, or perhaps you named yourself that because you're so hands-on. You go over there and check it all out. Yep, so part of our vision as a company was to, to source cacao from, from kind of lesser-known places and, and to make an impact in the places we go. So we work with farmers, um, and our whole desire is most of the farmers don't even see anything close to fair trade, and so we're in there kind of working with them, trying to find really good cacao that we can bring home and make chocolate from, and then we give 10% of our profits back into those farmers. That's just fantastic. It's just a, it's a good way and a, and a good thing to do, and, and you know, it, uh, it made a lot of sense. We can make a huge impact in small villages around the world, and so that's, that's something that just gets kind of close to our hearts. Now, you started at your house making this. It, it took a few batches. Yeah, probably close to 100 <laughs> batches. Wow. Uh, we started in our laundry room. My wife gave me a four-foot counter. She kicked me out of the laundry room, and uh, we moved into our sunroom. And then after one night in February where some chocolate got on the ceiling, uh, she kicked me out of the house, and we, we kind of moved into our first shop. Okay. And I wanted to ask you particularly about this packaging. It was designed so that it would catch a woman's eye from far away. Yeah, so when we came home and we started to think of chocolate as our vehicle to love on people around the world, we started to say, okay, so who buys chocolate? And 80% of the people that purchase chocolate are women. And so we're like, let's make a package that appeals to a woman, not a guy. Most of the chocolate in the shelves, it's big, bold letters in brown. It, it, it's guy chocolate. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so we said, let's make our chocolate pop off the shelf at eight feet. And so that's what we came up with. And that's fantastic. And you have all different flavors. How do you go about picking flavors? Well, so uh, we were actually at the Bentonville Farmer's Market kind of 
earning our keep, learning our wares, and uh, Whole Foods Forger came up one morning and said, hey, we, we really like what you're doing here. If you would add some infusions, some, some flavors to your chocolate, it'd be a really big hit. And so we just started to experiment with that, came up with some flavors that we liked, took them back to the farmer's market. It's been a great vehicle to kind of learn and, and just get feedback really immediately every week. Mm -hmm. And then we just use that to kind of lock down our flavors. And then we rotate out things that don't sell. And you learn. You, you are actually in 100 different locations? We're, uh, we're in 172 locations across the Midwest right now. Um, and so we're growing kind of a little bit every week. And it's a lot of fun right now because it's, it just continues to morph and become something new every day. And so it's a lot of fun. You can tell you love it. Yeah, I do. What would you say, we only have about 20 seconds, to someone watching who maybe has a dream or a product that they'd like to put out there and just try? So step one is is take that first step. Like if I had waited until we got to the place that we are now, I would have never left the starting gate. So my advice, the advice my dad gave me growing up is, is take a step, start, and then adapt. Listen to your customers, adapt, and then adjust. And over time, you'll get some fans, and those fans will tell your story for you, which is one of the cool things. And then, and then it's just fun. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to having you again on our show. Thanks. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Go online and check out Ethan Walton's blog. We're here today with Jeffrey Minajid from Chief Executive Air. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. So glad you could be here with us. Tell us a little bit about Chief Executive Air. Uh, Chief Executive Air is a full-service private aviation company. Uh, we charter our private jets, and we also provide consulting services for companies that are thinking of buying planes. Uh, we have a global footprint, and so if you're anywhere in the world and you need a plane, if there's a runway, we, we can help you. And I think I know the answer, but what brings you to Bentonville? <laughs> so Bentonville is one of the most popular destinations that we service. We've been bringing Walmart vendors down to Bentonville for about 15 years. Uh, the reason why I'm here today is because I'm really excited about a new service that we're launching, which is a shuttle service between New York and Bentonville. Uh, in the past, you've always had to rent the whole plane if you wanted to come on a private plane. And what we're doing is we're offering service by the seat so that you can still get the same level of private jet service without having to invest in the full cost of a plane. You share oh, the cost between other companies. That's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, so g give us an example of, of what it looks like, whether you know, it would be doing a single seat like that or maybe having a whole team come down here. Well, you know, either way, it's the same experience. You know, the, the, regardless of how you pay, you basically you're in a private setting. It's a private environment. The plane departs on your schedule. Uh, you're able to pretty much you know, have a meeting you know, on, on the flight. For example, this morning we had a bunch of executives from a company and they had a strategy session all the way down planning out their day, what they wanted to accomplish. They went through each meeting, meeting by meeting, and set up their own mini agenda of what they wanted to discuss and how they would handle it and got different people's advice. You know, if, you know, someone said something, how they would respond. Okay. Uh, it, it was really very productive. It was a real productive time for them. Well, they're in this nice closed environment right. where no one it's can get private. out. <laughs> They've got those three hours. No, no yeah. phones. You know, no interruption, so it was great. So this is a great service for like open call, your beginning meetings, those types of things. Um, companies could be looking for this type of a service. Yes, and you know the shuttle is from New York, but we provide service to Bentonville from anywhere in the world. Oh, so it doesn't okay. matter if you're on the West Coast, East Coast, Southeast, Northwest, even if you're overseas. You know, if you if your business brings you to Walmart, you know you yeah. focus on your meeting and you let us get you here. Yeah. Well, it sounds like Chief Executive Air is a great opportunity for companies. Thank you so much for coming in today, Jeffrey. Thank you. There's no cause greater than helping someone achieve their full potential in life. Join us by sponsoring our 2016 Sunshine Gala. Call Charles at 636-3190. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Support the Northwest Arkansas Children's Shelter at the Starlight Gala on Saturday, April 9th. Corporate sponsorships are available. Visit nwacs.org for more information. Bentonville Commerce, less than one mile from the Walmart home office. You'll love the convenience, amenities, and customized options Bentonville Commerce offers. For more information or a tour, call 479-200-1112 today. Are chargebacks busting your chops? Take two aspirin and call us in the morning. Ethan Walton, for a needs assessment, custom training in a confidential setting, and classes online and in person. Call Ethan Walton, 479-715-6700, and feel better fast.
Joining us now is Megan Overby. She's here from All of That. Thank you for being here today. Neely, thank you so much for having us. Obviously, we're going to talk about something sitting right here that I love. But before we get to that, give us an overview of your company and some of the things you create. Sure. All of That International is a 38-year-old privately held company. And we sell everyone from Walmart, Target, all the way up to Macy's, Bloomingdale's, as well as OEM. And we are an expert in the cut and sew industry. Okay, I'm so excited because we have many things to talk about here. When we talk about the Easter bucket, it was actually featured at the year beginning meeting. How did that go? It went really well. We've gotten a lot of um, a, a great feedback on these buckets as well as a lot of um, interest from the Walmart buyers. There are several things that you are proud of with this product, not the least of which is the Made in the USA, but that was a bit of a journey. Absolutely. We're very excited about these buckets for many reasons. We always have the customer in our, um, our minds when we're working with the buyer strategically. And we were um, able to reshore these products. They were made in China last year. Now they're made in the USA in uh, California. They're also sustainable. And we were able to lower the retail from $0.98 cents to $0.88. Cents. So let's back up a little bit because mm -hmm. you just touched on the sustainable. Sure. Elaborate on that because it's exciting. Yeah, so these buckets are actually made out of 100% post-consumer Walmart waste stream. And that's called a closed-loop solution. What I mean by that is um, all of that actually opened up a subsidiary called Ecotech. Mm -hmm. And we actually take Walmart waste stream. So, for example, an icing bucket from the icing uh, bakery department, okay. which would usually end up in a landfill. And we process it, and then we take those res resins and injection mold it back in a product and it's picked up and it ends back on Walmart it's shelves. Fantastic. It's very exciting. Okay, the price point. You just kind of threw that in there, but <laughs> to have the price point drop, it's been a challenge, has it not? It, it is a challenge. Um, there's obviously things out of our control, such as oil, um, oil prices, and commodities that fluctuate, but we were able to work strategically with our buyer, and we're very proud and excited that we were able to get to that end 88 cent retail. So when you put all of these things together in a product like this, how important is it to keep in mind being sustainable that made in the USA and your price point when reaching your target consumer and what kind of a difference can it make? Um, I think it gives us a competitive advantage um, from, the, from which is more important than the other. They're all very important. It means something to the customer and like I mentioned we're always thinking about the customer when we uh, develop product and we meet with the buyer. So I know that the customer really appreciates made in USA. It means something. They um, are, are interested in sustainability, but they don't necessarily want to pay more for it. So that's where retail comes into play. And you were able to make all of that happen. So a light question, because these are very cute. I cannot help it. I have to ask you, <laughs> which one is your cute. favorite? Which color? No, my favorite is aqua and pink right here, which okay. is why it, it's in its cute little decorative state there. <laughs> well, this is perfect timing and good information for other yeah. suppliers. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we leave you? Uh, they're in Walmart stores now, so if you're looking for a great, beautiful bucket at $0.88, cents, go out and buy them. And remember the difference it can make when you're talking about sustainability mm -hmm. and that made in the USA label, no matter what your category. Thank you for Absolutely. being here today. Thank you so much for having us. We'll be right back. Joining us now is Tina Odom, and she comes to us from Unilever. Thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Let's talk about some of your sweets or frozen, some of the products that you have. So for us in, this, in the sweets or frozen category for Unilever is our ice cream. Um, we have a lot of different brands, great brands. It is everything from packaged ice cream to novelty. So Breyers, Ben & Jerry's is a favorite, Magnum, Popsicle, Klondike, Good Humor, to Linty. We've got a lot of different um, options for anybody's sweet tooth. A lot of different brands. A lot of different brands. So the very thing that people love, it's also a challenge to get to them sometimes in the store, just in the way that it has to be encased. Talk to me about those pain points. So ice cream is frozen, so therefore it's only in the frozen department at Walmart or any retailer. Um, and it's truly about the pain point of you only have so many of those frozen doors, and it has to stay frozen. So it can't be in different places in the store. Um, and so that aisle and ice cream can be in different places, in, in the, especially in a Walmart store. It can be in the back of the store, it can be in the front of the store. And so the challenges are, is where is that shopper mm -hmm. in her journey? Um, and also what kind of trip she's on. So if I'm in the heat of summer and I'm just running in for a few things, I may not can put ice cream in my basket because I know that it's gonna melt by the time I get home. Or it could be she is um, shopping and she's gonna put ice cream in her basket last, but she got all the way to the front of the store and the frozen's still in the back. 
and she didn't go back or she's actually run out of cash or money for that shopping trip and it wasn't in that. So those are some of the challenges in ice cream that we face and that we have to try and overcome. And you said some of the ways you do that, very creative packaging, but also just having some product in the store for people to taste. Yeah, so um, a lot of times it's really about trying to see if we can showcase our innovation, uh, getting people to know about our new items. Um, we do a lot of sampling and demos in ice cream. Everyone wants to try ice cream. The lines when we do a sampling is long. Everyone, <laughs> Believe it. when they come in, um, and it's not just kids, it's everybody. They like to try ice cream. And so if we can tell pe let people know that and let them try it and see all the new flavors, then that just gets us one step closer, getting people down that aisle that they may have missed before. Something you explained to me just when we were talking, and it was a really good point, was when it comes to social media, it really depends on which brand you're working with because it depends on the consumer and being in good conversation with them. Yeah, so social media is very important in ice cream. Uh, you take a brand like Ben & Jerry's for us, they're really about uh, word of mouth marketing. A lot of their followers will follow them in social media, and a lot of what Ben & Jerry's does is really in that um, social media space of talking to them about causes, about different things. And so that's very important to like a Ben & Jerry's. Some of the other things that we would do in social media would be more around innovation. But if we're talking to Popsicle um, and different things, and we're talking to mom about, it, to her, about her kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just it plays differently by brand. But in certain brands like Ben & Jerry's, it's much more important than some of the others. So fair to say if you're a supplier, remember to know your audience. Absolutely. And ice cream is for everybody, right? So from young of heart to old, um, or young at heart to young, right? Right, that's, right, right. <laughs> that's really what it is. And so, and they play a different role in the house. Mm -hmm. Different brands might be better for kids, and not necessarily because of nutrition or different things, but because they just gravitate more to those types of flavors. So if you're a popsicle lover and you like all the candies and sour patches and those things that kids kind of like, or you might be more indulgent in chocolate that mom likes, or dad kind of goes more to those bars and the Klondikes, right? So it just depends on who your audience is and who you need to talk to, and that's what's fun about ice cream. It's for everybody. So a takeaway for our viewers, and thank you so much, by the way, for your time today. A good takeaway is to remember to know your audience and be in conversation. Don't just talk at them. We'll be right back. Visit us at 8thandwalton.com to learn how you can become a better partner with Walmart. We're here today with Randy Walker from Harvest Data. Welcome, Randy. Thanks for having me. And you're going to be sharing us a little bit about the free Linker app. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So we designed this free application for suppliers to help them download data from Walmart's Retail Link website. Our whole goal and purpose was to make it easy for them to get the data from Walmart. Okay, and how exactly does this app work? What does it do? Sure. So uh, whenever you run a report in Retail Link, you get an Outlook-like pop-up notification in our Linker free app. And once you click on it, then it enables you to select wherever you want to save that report. It keeps you from actually having to log into, a, uh, into Walmart's website sure and select and keep refreshing going back in there over and over again to try to find a report see if it's downloaded absolutely absolutely now you have a free version but you also have a paid version what's the difference between the two sure the free version is meant uh, so that suppliers can get an introduction and uh, it's an easy to use application but then our paid version is our fully automated solution it uh, runs at night overnight uh, constantly checking and then downloading so then whenever you walk in on Monday morning to your desk or any day of the week your reports are already waiting for you and then also uh, whenever you're running ad hoc reports then it continues to check and download those reports for you and you never even have to click any Outlook pop-ups. Wow. Well, that free version sounds great. I mean, for an analyst uh, to be able to have those reports automatically come down and kind of test this software out and kind of see how it works, it sounds like a great way to enter into this. Absolutely. Thank you so yeah. much. Well, thank you so much, Randy, for coming in today and sharing about Harvest Data. We really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Doug McMillan will be speaking at the Corporate Luncheon on March 30th, presented by Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Benton County. Our own Neely Jones is serving as MC. 
Register online at spsfbc.org forward slash about forward slash events. GigWalk is transforming how work gets done. As the leading mobile workforce management platform, GigWalk provides companies with mobile tools and a data-driven approach to improving business efficiency. Leading brands and retailers use GigWalk to manage their field teams and to mobilize 750,000 GigWalkers to collect data intelligence about their business and brands. Are the shelves stocked? Are my products priced competitively? Are the correct promotions in place? Visit us at gigwalk.com to learn more. Gigwalk, make work better. Are bookkeeping disputes a pain in the neck? Take two aspirin and call us in the morning. Ethan Walton for a needs assessment, custom training in a confidential setting, and classes online and in person. Call Ethan Walton, 479-715-6700 and feel better fast. Joining us now, a friend and familiar face, Lauren Marquette from the Ozark Affiliate of the Susan G. Komen for the Cure Foundation. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You guys have a very exciting event coming up. We, we have do. to talk about it. April 30th. Yes. The Komen Ozark Race for the Cure. Mm -hmm. And you're still looking for participants and even if people want to sponsor. Absolutely. We will, um, you know, we are working so hard for local women and to meet needs and we will take... Um, your money, whether it's sponsorship, whether it's fundraising, whether it's participating. Um, if you don't, if you're a little strapped for cash, we would love for you to come and volunteer um, to cheer on our participants. Um, we have a place for everyone. And you don't always have to write a check. Sometimes you can be there to help pass out water, anything you can think of. Absolutely. You guys are hoping for more than 800,000, to mm -hmm. raise more than 800,000 mm -hmm. and more than 8,000 participants. Mm -hmm. So we need to get there. Yes. So folks can go to your website? Yes, they can. It's uh, comanozark.org, and you can register or make a donation. And, um, and we're also going to be opening our um, race office at the Pinnacle Hills Promenade Mall April the 12th, I believe. It's around the corner. I know, it is. It's so <laughs> exciting. You guys have done a lot of different things. You were telling me you just recently finished an initiative that you're really pushing. Talk mm -hmm. to me about that. Absolutely. So we just finished this um, huge uh, community profile where we do an assessment on the healthcare systems. We go and do focus groups. Um, we pull in the data of what our service area looks like. And we just talk and we, t we listen and we talk to people and see what's going on. And um, through all of our focus groups, we realized that um, there are certain priority areas. One is in this area, um, specifically um, the Hispanic community and making sure that all of our um, programs are culturally um, competent and also bilingual. Mm -hmm. um, and then another big area that we're trying to um, address is survivorship needs. And um, we, with the loss of our executive director um, not even a year ago, we realized that there's a lot of survivorship needs and questions that need to be answered. And so we we're working on putting money into that. And, and so as soon as a woman hears you're cancer free, that's not the last um, information that she's given. It, it's interesting that you mentioned that. We were talking about this. I just have a, I had a friend. She just went through the surgery, had a double mastectomy, and it was the strangest thing for her when the doctor says, okay, you're cancer-free, because she felt like, wait, what? my life is not normal. What's the new normal? Absolutely. So this kind of helps with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a program that's very needed. One in eight women. Mm -hmm. We see that statistic bounce back and forth between one and seven, one and eight. Mm -hmm. So we just want to drive home. This can happen to men and women. Absolutely. And make sure we're getting participants on all level. And then very special race chair this year, your honorary race chair. Yes, we're so excited to have um, Judith McKenna, the COO of Walmart, um, join us to be our honorary race chair. She has already issued challenges um, internally, and she is gung-ho to raise uh, more money and to make sure that women are covered. Um, she's actually involved in the breast cancer movement in the UK through Tickled Pink. So, um, cool. so it's, it's a cause near and dear to her heart and we were so glad to connect with her and she's just been fantastic. One of the things I love about you guys is you really truly care mm -hmm. and you keep the funds that you raise in your service area which I believe, I want to make sure I get it right, Benton, Washington, Madison, Franklin County as well as Sebastian County mm -hmm. and then two counties in Missouri. Yeah, we're not in Franklin. Not Franklin. But Crawford. Cra Crawford yes. County. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we have two counties in Missouri as well, Stone and Taney. So it stays um, here. Stays here. It stays here. 75% of what's raised stays local, and it goes for things like mentioned survivorship. Mm -hmm. um, it goes for access to care. So it could be mammograms, could be biopsies. Um, we do some treatment, mastectomies, but we do a lot of emergency assistance too because we never want a woman to decide to put either to put food on their table or to make it to treatment. Yeah. Um, so we've we've been seeing a lot with the changes in healthcare. We've been seeing more women covered, but. We, um, trouble paying the copays or deductibles and then also needing to get to 
and back and from treatment or it might be child care or things like that. So we kind of adjust to fit the need. So there are many different ways that you can support. Support someone in the race, make a donation, or simply volunteer. Up next, we have an update for you on a heart of business we brought to you earlier this year. Stay tuned. We are here at the corporate luncheon for the Northwest Arkansas chapter of the American Heart Association. Two of my favorite people, Celia and Carmen, thanks for taking a minute to talk to us. I want to ask you both why it's so important to be supportive of this organization. I'll start with you, Celia. It's important because it strikes home um, with losses that happen. It's important because we need to educate people on what are the warning signs. We need to encourage people to go get their heart checkup and a well checkup, and we're making an impact in Northwest Arkansas through the circles, and I'm excited to be a part of that. And Carmen, what would you say about the importance of being involved in when Walmart supporting this group? Well, I think uh, when I look at the organization overall, and as Celia said, you know, it's such an important uh, part of what we do um, at Walmart in particular, and, and really supporting all these organizations that really have, uh, you know, an impact, you know, uh, in particularly in women, in this case for me. Uh, this is a number one killer for women, right? So, and not very many people know that. So for me, leveraging obviously a great company that I work for being Walmart uh, and being able to reach as many women as we can, you know, that is my goal, that's my uh, mission and to be able to um, drive the awareness and just create as much awareness as we can. Thank you both. I know you've been excited to visit with Star. It's been nice to have her. We talked about diversity a little bit and about the importance of diversity both in the corporate world, in our community, and raising awareness for people of all ethnicity about heart disease. Is there anything else you guys want to say? Because I feel like we have a tendency as women to go, we're the caregiver and worry about everybody else when you need to be looking at yourself. I think your point about ethnicity is great because heart disease is colorblind and so it's a common issue the number one killer as Carmen said I didn't know that until I got involved with this and so it's a passion for anyone doesn't matter what ethnicity you are I hope that people will take this as a challenge to go get that well checkup and find out what your heart health really is Absolutely. I take advantage of the opportunity. I'm Hispanic. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as when you talk about ethnicity, you know, and I, I started doing a lot of research to really understand, you know, how does it, you know, does the Hispanic community understand, especially the women, the Hispanic women understand um, the, this is the number one killer, actually, for Hispanic women as well. It, again, regardless, uh, it is the number one killer for women, but importantly, I thought I could leverage, you know, being Hispanic, being able to speak the language and communicate mm -hmm. um, the uh, importance of having a checkup and make sure that you're listening to your body, mm -hmm. that you do take care of yourself. Uh, and as caregivers, as you said, you know, we kind of care for everybody else first. Um, you know, it is important that you listen to, to your body. Thank you, you know, both so much. Yourself. It's so nice to see you both. We really appreciate your support and Thank also you. being able to talk with you. It can make a real difference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Visit walmartnewsnow.com for the most current retail news. Support the Northwest Arkansas Children's Shelter at the Starlight Gala on Saturday, April 9th. Corporate sponsorships are available. Visit nwacs.org for more information. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area. Call 479-200-1112 today. You just had your buyer meeting. Now there's follow-up to do. Maybe your buyer wants more on seasonal sales or invited you to prepare a joint business plan or set up a date for your line review. Ethan Walton can help. Our experts work with you one-on-one -on -one in a confidential setting to prepare for your next buyer meeting. The classes we offer help you too. Retail link, supply chain management, inventory management, taught in cities across the country, in Canada, and in Latin America. So before your next buyer meeting, contact Ethan Walton. Then relax, knowing that you will be ready. That does it for this week's show. Here are a few takeaways you just might want to jot down. First, 
Recognize the barriers that shoppers may face when they're looking for your product. And number two, find innovative ways to engage customers in the store. Also, remember, made in the USA and sustainability remain two top priorities for today's consumers. So do good and also help your bottom line all at the same time. That does it for this week. We'll see you back here next week for another Focus on Suppliers. To record this show, set your DVR to Focus on Suppliers, Sundays at 5 a.m. on KNWA.